good morning. Uh, we will have uh, short statements by the Secretary General and uh, the President of Estonia, and then we'll have time for a couple of questions. Secretary General, please go ahead. President Karis, uh, there are a lot. Uh, welcome to NATO headquarters. It's a pleasure to have you here and to meet with you. Uh, thank you for your strong personal commitment uh, to our transatlantic alliance. Estonia <clears throat> is a highly valued NATO ally, uh, which makes um, important contributions to our shared security. You host one of NATO's uh, battle groups in the Baltic region, helping to deter any aggression. NATO jets uh, also keep your skies safe with our air policing mission, and allied ships uh, patrol the Baltic uh, Sea. NATO's uh, forces continue to preserve peace and prevent uh, conflict. I welcome that Estonia continues to lead by example by spending more than 2% of GDP on defense, investing in major uh, equipment. You also play uh, a vital role in strengthening the Alliance's cyber defenses, including through the work of the Center of uh, Excellence uh, in Tallinn. It is vital that we keep our deterrence and defense strong in all domains, especially now as we face a more unpredictable world. We just addressed uh, the security situation in Eastern uh, Europe, including Russia's military buildup in and around Ukraine. NATO will always respond to any deterioration of our security environment, including by strengthening our collective defense. We will always do what is necessary to protect and defend all allies. And we remain committed to our dual track approach of strong defense and meaningful dialogue. In the NATO Russia Council yesterday, allies made clear that any further aggression against Ukraine uh, would carry a high price for Russia. Allies also expressed willingness to engage in further dialogue uh, so long as it addresses our serious concerns, and we will never compromise on fundamental principles of European security. Our goal uh, is real de-escalation from Russia and engagement uh, uh, in good faith and on substance in the interest of everyone's security. So, President Karis, uh, NATO has uh, guaranteed Estonia's security since you joined our alliance back in 2004. That commitment is stronger than ever. I look forward to continuing working with you. So once again, welcome to NATO headquarters. Please have the floor. Thank you, Secretary General. Dear Jens. NATO is and will be the foundation of Estonia's defense and uh, Euro-Atlantic security. But perhaps even more importantly, it is a forum for allies for to forge a shared assessment of security problem and decide how to, uh, on how to respond. In the past weeks and months, NATO has proven its value in this regard. Allies have remained strong and united. NATO stands between us and the world where stronger nations decide the fate of the smaller ones behind their backs. This was the world of secret protocols and spheres of influence robbing scores of European nations of a serenity, very, very right to exist. Nobody wants it back. I was particularly pleased to meet today with uh, Secretary General Stoltenberg. We exchanged views on the tension created by Russia. I want to underline that military escalation on Ukraine's border has not ceased. We will call Russia to de-escalate, de to engage in meaningful dialogue and increase transparency. We emphasize our strong support to Ukraine, not just in words, but in actions. NATO will defend its values, democracy, freedom, and every nation's right to choose its own security arrangements. This is why the Baltic state decided to join NATO in 2004, and we saw it was the best guarantee for our security. It was the only decision. And when as all now NATO allies strongly agree that there will be no special zones in NATO where allied military activities and presence are limited. The readiness that Moscow demonstrates the use of military force underlines the importance of NATO's military presence in uh, Baltic states. NATO will fight for every square centimeter of transatlantic area. And of course, 
we will do our own homework. Estonia will continue to make its contribution to NATO. We also discussed the upcoming NATO summit in Madrid in June. NATO's next strategic concept will strengthen our collective defense. It will adapt NATO and will ensure it keeps up with the peace, with a pace with a change, including emerging and disruptive technologies or cyber security. Estonia is ready to be at the forefront of these discussions. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. We will uh, take some questions. We'll start with uh, Ketvan Kadova from Imedi TV. Thank you very much. Mr. Secretary General, I have a question regarding yesterday's meeting. Um, uh, have you, did you discuss with uh, uh, Deputy Russian Foreign Affairs Ministers the situation in Georgia, uh, occupied territories, and our future membership? Uh, we know very well that uh, Ukraine is uh, high on the agenda, but uh, the situation is the same in Georgia also. And the uh, second question, uh, after your press conference yesterday, uh, Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister from Russia said, that in case of NATO expansion, the consequences will be severe. So what is the next? Should we, um, for example, wait uh, some NATO response in written form or something, anything else? And Mr. President, how would you evaluate the progress made by Georgia with regards of future membership and how Estonia can help us uh, to reach um, consensus we need in this organization to receive the invitation to become, in the future, the member of this organization. Thank you so much. The NATO allies raised a wide range of issues related to European security in the meeting yesterday in the NATO-Russia Council, uh, including uh, the uh, message about that we, of course, support uh, the territorial integrity and sovereignty uh, of uh, also uh, Georgia. Um, of course, the main focus was Ukraine because of the very tense and difficult situation, but uh, uh, also Georgia was part of the discussion uh, where allies uh, reiterated their strong support and, uh, and also s stated clearly that uh, the issue of membership uh, of uh, NATO is uh, for the Aspen countries, uh, Georgia in this case, and the 30 allies to decide. No one else uh, has the right to try to veto or to interfere in that uh, process. And this is about fundamental principles for European security. It's about the right for every nation to choose their own path. And I also uh, uh, register and take note of the fact that, uh, for instance, Finland and Sweden, who are actually not uh, currently uh, seeking uh, NATO membership, they have stated very clearly that even for them this is unacceptable that uh, Russia uh, calls on NATO to sign a legally binding agreement uh, saying that there will be no further enlargement neither with Georgia or uh, 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 Ukraine or uh, in the future rule out any possible membership, for instance, for uh, Finland and Sweden. Because this is about violating the whole idea that each and every nation can decide their own future by themselves. So then in that context, uh, Georgia was absolutely part of the discussion because these principles also applies fully for uh, Georgia. Um, then, then on the way forward, uh, well, what we, uh, 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 so we had a very extensive uh, discussion, it was an open and frank discussion, but, uh, uh, but our NATO allies uh, put forward a proposal to agree a series of meetings uh, addressing arms control, uh, risk reduction, transparency, all the issues of importance for European security, uh, and then to meet uh, in the NATO Russia Council in a series of meetings to uh, sit down with Russia. It is good in itself that we're able to sit uh, down around the same table and address these issues. Uh, we are far uh, uh, apart from each other on many of these issues, but at least uh, we need to uh, engage in a meaningful dialogue, and we have outlined the way forward, the process, uh, the, the, the issues to be discussed, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, how to meet and, how, and, uh, and to engage in, uh, in, in a dialogue. Russia was not in a position in the meeting to respond uh, to NATO's proposed way forward, but I hope that they will come back and agree. And we have also made it clear that we are ready to put concrete proposals on the table uh, and then to discuss those with uh, Russia. So we are ready to engage in dialogue, but not to compromise on core principles of uh, open door 
and of course NATO's right to protect and defend all allies. Thank you very much for this question. Um, Mr. Stalter McGrawley asked, answered most of, uh, most of his uh, question uh, that this week keep this open door uh, policy, uh, discuss this also uh, today, and this applies uh, not only to, uh, to Sweden and, and Finland, it also applies to, uh, to Georgia. And how can I, help? I can, we can help in Estonia, I mean, by all means, they fulfill the, the criteria, what is needed, but it's all also up to Georgia whether to um, join NATO or not, and it's up to 30 members of, uh, of NATO whether to decide to uh, take them uh, in this uh, alliance. So, uh, well, I carefully look what's happening in, in Georgia as well, not only in, in Ukraine, and trying to to help them to fulfill all these criteria to, to get into NATO, if they, they want themselves. Okay, we'll take a question from Estonian Public Broadcasting. Uh, Joseph Berg from Estonian Public Broadcasting. So we're, we're living in a reality where there's a clear threat that uh, Russia might attack one of its neighbors once again. So I would like to ask how can you assure that, that the people of Estonia are safe and in case of an armed conflict, will you fortify the eastern flank of NATO even more? NATO is based uh, on the core principle that uh, we defend and protect each other, and that an attack on one ally uh, will be regarded as an attack on all allies. And uh, this principle, one for all, all for one, has kept uh, all allies safe for more than 70 years. And now this principle also applies for Estonia since you joined back in 2004. Um, the strength of that principle is that uh, uh, it is absolutely clear to any potential adversary that there is no way you can use military force against one NATO ally, including Estonia, without uh, being prepared to face the response from 30 allies together. And to, 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 to underpin that message, uh, we have uh, since 2014, since uh, Russia used force against Ukraine uh, and Ill illegally annexed Crimea and, and, and started to destabilize eastern Ukraine in, Donbas, uh, in the Donbas region, we have significantly reinforced our presence in the eastern part of the alliance. For the first time in our history, we have combated the battle groups, not only in Estonia, but also in Lithuania, Latvia and Poland. We have air policing, we have more maritime presence, so there is more presence on the ground, uh, at sea and in the air. Uh, and we have tripled the size of the NATO response force, so this is not only about the forces we have in the region, but also the forces we can quickly bring in. We exercise them, we test them. Um, uh, so we can bring in uh, additional forces if, uh, if needed. And, Ala, and we have modernized the NATO command structure, including a new command in Ulm in Germany that is actually focused on only one thing, and that is bring tro troops and forces across Europe so we can easily reinforce any part of our alliance, including the Baltic uh, region. Um, and the presence of the battle groups, uh, the UK-led battle group in Estonia, is important partly because they are combat ready troops working closely together with the Estonian forces, but also because they are multinational. NATO is already there, so NATO will be present from day one in any potential conflict. The, pur the purpose of this military presence is not to provoke a conflict, it's not to, uh, to, 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 to pose any threat to any neighbour, but it's just to send a clear message of deterrence. Uh, it is to prevent conflict, uh, and, uh, and we have done that uh, successfully for more than 70 years, and absolutely certain that as long as we stand united, as we did in a meeting yesterday, as we do every, year, uh, every day in NATO, uh, 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 there will be no armed attack against Estonia or any other NATO ally, just because together we represent 50% of the world's military might, and, uh, and, uh, and, and our unity is our greatest strength, and standing together is the best way to deter any aggression against any NATO ally, including uh, Estonia. Okay, we will take uh, one question online from uh, Momchil Indyov from Club Z Media. Uh, good morning, Secretary General. Yesterday, the Estonian Prime Minister uh, Kaya Kalas said that the Baltic states are discussing, um, are, are talking to NATO allies about increasing military deployments of their soil to deter Russia. 
Uh, has until now such a proposal come from the um, southeastern flank of the NATO? I mean, from member states like uh, Romania, Bulgaria or Turkey. Thank you. So we are constantly assessing uh, our uh, presence, our uh, posture in the eastern part of the alliance. Um, and, uh, and over the last years, we have uh, um, made the biggest reinforcement of our collective defense in this part of Europe uh, in a generation, uh, with the battle groups, uh, with uh, the air policing, with the increased presence in general. Uh, and, uh, and we will always do what it takes to make sure that uh, there is no room for misunderstanding, miscalculation about NATO's uh, commitment and NATO's capability to defend all allies. So, so we are constantly assessing that. I'm not going into details about the different uh, uh, potential uh, proposals, but, uh, but NATO uh, is always ready to do what it takes to defend all allies. Okay, I think we have time for one more question, uh, which we will take from Vivian Mackey from Defence News, again online. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking my question. Um, first, uh, for Secretary General Stoltenberg, but I'd also um, appreciate President Karras's response to this too. Uh, Secretary General, you said yesterday that NATO was ready to schedule meetings with Russia vis-a-vis -vis, um, offensive missile limits in Europe, but that uh, Russia made clear they were not quite ready um, to schedule those meetings yet. But um, has there been any established agreement within NATO on mutual limits with Russia vis-a-vis -vis missile arsenals and also training exercises? Have the member nations themselves come to an agreement on what you would like to see with Russia with regards to uh, missile limits? Thank you very much. So NATO allies have made clear that we are ready to uh, engage in talks on a wide range of issues, including uh, arms control. There are different formats for the, for the different uh, topics. Uh, NATO allies uh, have clearly stated again and again that uh, we regret that uh, the, the agreement we had that actually banned all intermediate range missiles, not only in Europe, but globally, the INF Treaty, uh, banned all uh, intermediate-range missiles, um, uh, both uh, conventional and nuclear, um, uh, that actually we regret that Russia violated that treaty that led to the demise of the whole INF treaty. But of course, that's a treaty we have supported before, and we can engage in talks uh, re-establishing some kind of limits, uh, uh, different types of limits uh, on uh, on missiles um, as long as this is uh, reciprocal, uh, balanced and verifiable. Um, exactly the numbers, exactly the, the scale and the scope uh, and uh, how we do that, I think that's the kind of diplomatic negotiations that should not take place in public. That will only undermine uh, the possibility for a successful outcome. Uh, of course, the US and Russia has bilateral talks. They are important on, on strategic uh, weapons. Uh, but we have clearly expressed our willingness to sit down and discuss different kinds of limitations uh, at different levels um, as long as they are balanced uh, and verifiable. Uh, and, and we had an agreement not only limiting but actually banning all uh, uh, intermediate range weapons which are of great concern in, uh, in Europe. From a position of uh, one of the member states of, and, and from the eastern flank, I mean, this is not acceptable that we should uh, limit or ban uh, military exercises in, uh, in, in, let's say, in Estonia. It's quite, quite the opposite. What, what we can do in, in that sense that provide more transparency, which you have already, what we are doing and what we are planning to do. So this, this is acceptable and this is, have to be kind of bilateral. Thank you. Okay, I think we have time for one very final question in the room again, Estonian Public Broadcasting. So during the last weeks, there have been discussions in Finland and Sweden about NATO membership. And I would like to ask, uh, in case they should want to join, would and could there be a fast track for them to join NATO? Finland and Sweden are very close uh, partners. They are enhanced opportunity partners. Uh, we have worked together with them. We have exercised together with them. We have train together with them, they meet NATO standards uh, in most areas, uh, they, 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 they have very uh, uh, well-organized uh, uh, and well-governed defense and security institutions, uh, 
So in many ways, of course, they are very close to NATO uh, in all aspects. Um, uh, so in that sense, this can go very quickly if they decide to apply. Um, but at the end of the day, this will be a political decision uh, that has to be taken in uh, uh, Sweden and in Finland if they want to apply. And at the end of the day, also a political decision among 30 allies. But I, I think it's, it's quite obvious that since we are so close already, if the political will is there, the, the whole process can uh, uh, move quite uh, quickly. And of course, from the position of Estonia, we would be very glad because we are also not only close partners, but they are also geographically very close. So, uh, but then again, it's up to, uh, up to these countries to decide. Okay, thank you very much. That's all we have time for today. Thank you. Thank you.